Welcome to the Level Up Your Band podcast, episode 63. And welcome back to the Level Up Your Band podcast. My name is Gavin Patterson, and I'm here with Julian Pombo. Hello. I was just fixing my collar because I saw it there. I hate the one, one, one in, one out, one like part of your collar tucked in, the <laughs> other one out. It's it's the it's possibly it's the worst look he's, ever. He's sporting anyway, a, a very a very flash tweed bonnet today. I like it. Yeah. Is that a tweed? Yeah. I feel like uh, <laughs> I, uh, I don't think it's genuine tweed. Let me have a. It's only a look it's here. only tweed if it's made in Harris or. Uh, uh, no, it's not. I bought it ages ago. I think from Primark. <laughs> Primark. <laughs> uh, what is it made out of? It's right. Yes, it's made in China. I know that, but tell me Ugh. the. Composition, like everything's made in China, bro. Yeah, it doesn't say. Har- it doesn't say Harris what it's made out of. I, I, oh no, polyester, because everything, everything's made out of plastic it's now. Disgusting. All our clothes. Yep. Might as well be walking around in plastic bags. Bin bags, yeah. May as well. <laughs> I'm allergic to polyester. Yeah, it's crazy. Interestingly enough, um, whenever I wear polyester, I just break out and really? like, rashes and start sneezing. Um, yeah, it's not good. Wow. Yeah. So I'm a cotton boy. I just everything I wear is cotton or wool or, yeah, not polyester. Mm. Well, I mean, yeah, just natural natural fibers. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it's good, man. It's better, better for the environment in some ways. Yeah. You know? So how about you this walking week? Walking around in plastic. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. It's nice to see that there's a little... I think, I think we've spoken about this before, but it's nice to see that there's some kind of light mm. at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, and it's not you another know, train. Like, uh, <laughs> it's th- th- <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But, like... <laughs> but like it, that's, it's kind of... I don't know. It's, it's exciting. It's exciting seeing that there's things happening and, mm. you know... We'll, we'll, uh, you know, gigs getting put in place and, yep. you know, stuff like that. And yeah, we'll yeah. hopefully see what happens. I just, um, on, on but yeah, no, I'm Thursday, pretty, I'm pretty happy, hopeful. On Thursday, I think, uh, I think it was, I recorded that gig, that online gig thing. Um, it was so bizarre because mm-hmm. we hadn't played since like second week in March from, uh, 2020. Gosh. And it's now the second week in April 2021. So I was expecting it to be quite rough. Now, it was and it wasn't. It was weird. Like, once we got going, it was, like, just as normal. Um, It was actually Mm. all right. Um, Yeah. I was quite surprised uh, how well it went. It felt, like, just normal, Mm. uh, which is cool. Yeah, it was quite nice to play in a band again. No, that is cool. Um, don't know how an yeah, online gig is gonna I, work. I know. Yeah. I had a, yeah, I had a rehearsal. I've got. A, I'm. I'm playing, playing a gig uh-huh. for somebody's recital. Okay. Um, on on Thursday, but mm. it's uh, we're recording it, so we've okay. got like a wee three hour block. So that that's that's how it's kind of getting done. Yeah. Um. But yeah, same experience. Like I was like, wait, what? How do I read music again? What is this? Yeah. Uh, mu- playing with a with a drummer, <clears throat> backbeats. Uh, what? What's happening? I have to listen out for cues and stuff. Mm. It was weird, but it was also kind of, it was exciting. You know, I was like, I was a little, I don't know, like twitchy. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> playing playing bass but it was really no it's good i'm looking forward to it on on thursday actually it's gonna be a good laugh mm. it's gonna yeah. be good um so um but yeah yeah today's episodes uh big i've got another clickbait t- title <laughs> is I'm, i think i'm gonna call it is your music any good um oh yeah so 
this is um, kind of off the back of another episode we did, which is actually probably our most popular episode, other than some of the interviews. Um, mm -hmm. Was I can't remember what episode it is. Um, it'll be. Is it our music theory episode? It is. It certainly is not our most popular one. Um, our most popular one, oh, right, as okay. far as I'm aware, is how to listen to your own music, which is episode ah. forty-two. How to listen to your own music. Mm -hmm. um, quite a lot of people listen to that, which was cool. Um, you know how to be subjective and uh, or objective rather and you know, how you should go about mm. listening and critiquing your own music. Well, this this one's slightly different. This one is going to go into... Yeah. Uh, how do you know if your music is any good? And what, what do we know about music that yeah. would justify saying, oh, this is good or whatever? So we're going to get a bit deep into sort of um, f philosophy, music philosophy, and like what music is and all this and blah, blah, blah. Well, yes. Yeah, so the idea of good music is most often referred to as a subjective thing. You always hear people saying, oh, is, is it any good? Oh, that's subjective. You know, like, it's just your opinion, man. Um, it's kind of true and kind yeah. of not true. Um, it's generally yeah. true, but specifically untrue. Um, so I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll explain that a bit because uh, that doesn't really make any sense. So... Yes, music or art in general is subjective, whether you like it or not, that's subjective. But there are mm. inherent facts about human beings that that means that human beings are gravitated towards certain things mm. and find certain things attractive. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of out with your object, uh, out out with your subjectivity, and is more to do with how you were built. Um, so when when we say when we say right. good, or well, when I say good, I mean enjoyable to the listener. Um, while it can be subjective, it is generally objective that some things within music can be referred to as objectively good um, because human beings are all built the same. Yeah. Um, so the, the objective part comes from the fact that human beings are built in a certain way and most humans react to certain musical things in the same way across cultures. Would you Would you agree with that? Uh, yeah, actually. No, 100%. Well, <clears throat> let, let, let me read it and critique it. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I genuinely, yeah, that's that's about right. Yeah, like um, I was actually gonna make the a couple of like interesting observations for me anyway. Uh -huh. You know, there's a lot of music that I've listened to, and I'm like, <clears throat> uh, I can I can understand why somebody would like this. Uh huh. And then I'm like, but I I can say that it's not my taste yep but i can see why other people are into it you know things like not i uh, i like some atonal music but not all of it uh i've got got to be honest with you although to be fair i'm quite cynical when it comes to that kind of stuff and i think it's all just uh it's it's all people just cutting around going Yes, good music. Yes, it's good <coughs> because they're scared of appearing stupid or something. Yeah, you know, yeah. like that uh, Hans Christian Andersen Emperor's New Clothes. Yes, you know, that's how I always. That's the analogy that I use. It's kind of <coughs> like yes, wow, mmm, good art, good music. Yes, you see that a lot and, uh, in you know mu uh, movie reviews or critics. But they give it like gleaming reviews, yes. and then all the audience reviews are all terrible because all oh, you you peasants are just too stupid yeah. to recognise the the genius of the yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it it's really interesting to see the it's in Rotten Tomatoes. Yes, I love looking uh, through that. It's great. The 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 Disparity. the tomato score yeah. uh, and the audience score. Yeah. Uh, you know, because it, especially when their odds are so interesting, because mm. you'll get a film that's like got a 10% rating and people are like, this is the best movie ever made. I love it. It's so fun. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, something, I wonder what the room has on, uh, on, uh, Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> Classic room. Uh, I'm curious. It'll probably round about the middle, I'd say, for audience score. Okay, interesting. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's, well, it's about twenty three percent on a tomato meter, and the audience meter is about 
50 something mm -hmm. percent so yeah that's interesting i would have thought it'd be higher than that but hey there's probably some people going no this is it's a terrible film yep and it's a terrible film. I would say There's that's, no, like, you can enjoy this. It's a good example, ironically. actually, because I would say that film is objectively bad. But if you sit through it and watch it, and it's an acquired taste. And what I mean by acquired taste is you have to go and acquire that taste. You know, the more you watch it, the more mm. funny it becomes. And it becomes, a, yeah. it, on first watch, you would turn it off and think, what the, what is this rubbish? <laughs> but you're, like, if you keep yeah. watching it, the memes, like, proliferate and then yeah it's, totally uh, as somebody uh I, that is yeah the room was like my gateway drug into just terrible movies mm -hmm. and since then i enjoy i enjoy bad movies because there's yeah it is an acquired taste there's like a certain you look for it's almost like bad movies have their own you know composition you know people go a but a certain way, you know, uh, and all the same tropes appear, all the same memes, yeah. you know, same, all the similar themes crop up every single time. Mm. But anyway, yeah. Yeah. But you get the point. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. acquired, acquired taste. It's, it's like no, nobody. Yeah, you can acquire a taste for something. I, it's very rare to find anyone who drinks an espresso for the first time and, and loves it to bits. It's usually like, like I'm thinking of something really strong, like espresso. Like nobody, like yeah. apart from you, nobody just yeah. like never has um, coffee ever. And then here's an espresso, and it's like, oh, um, yum yum. It's just really hard to drink I, an espresso. I'm, I'm hardwired for. Um, I, I think my brain it just reacts to bitter tastes, which is probably okay. You know, I don't know if it, if that's a good thing or not. It means I can chug medicine, mm. no problem. Mm. But uh, you know, if if caveman me would probably be like, "Mmm, berry, very bitter, and yum, yum, yum," and then die. <laughs> poison, <laughs> poison. poisonous, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, coffee, whiskey, mm. really harsh. You know, sort of like arc, uh, alcohols and stuff like that. No problem. I don't, uh, no problem. You know, if some people like Rachel can't, she 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 smells beer. And she's like, Bleh. yeah. And I'm like, beer is so tame. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. I mean? In the scale of things, yeah. But <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here's a here's a couple of examples. I would like you to give me more examples because you're a trained um, musician. I'm not. I'm just a. I'm just mm. a dude. Um, so uh, some examples of certain musical um, things that crop up across cultures across the whole world. Here's some examples. Yeah. Pentatonic, the pentatonic scale, not necessarily the Western pentatonic, but just five notes in general. Some pentatonics are different, but or you get different selections of five notes, but yeah. it's usually five notes. Like uh yeah, um, Gamelan has a really interest um you know uh, I can't remember which one. Uh which, because there's different different yeah, types. Yeah, yeah. But um it has a feature it uses a pentatonic scale, which is like uh let me see if I can Okay, it's set on electric piano. An organ sound. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Actually, it's a four-note scale. Okay. No, five-note scale because it's A, C sharp, D, E, G sharp, A. Roughly, they don't tune their instruments That's the same right. way that That's we right. do. They have a totally different. They're they're not A four forty guys. Yeah. <laughs> not even A four thirty two. It's just it's crazy. <laughs> It's to do with the, the so temperament. So that's a rough approximation, you know. Yep. Um, but yeah, that's an example of a um, of a of a, a pentatonic yep. scale. Um, but it's, yeah, so it's still five stuff notes. like that. Uh, four four rhythm or three four rhythm uh, as well. Um, so yeah, what I was going to say three like or four. It, it, uh, groups are three or four occasionally. Um, I, I, and some prime numbers, right? Okay, you know. Well, it usually it tends to go like two, three, four, five, seven, nine are your mate because three and six are kind of interchangeable. Yes, really. Yeah. You know, you can fight me in whatever thing you leave comments on. You can be <laughs> like, no, but uh, 
you know, two, three, four, five, seven, nine. And whether that's seven, four or seven, eight, you know, uh, it, you know, it, it appears quite a lot. From, nine, what, from what I understand, uh, um, nine, eight, for example, and is used a lot in like Celtic music. Well, that's what I was going to say. Music. That's what I was going to say. And in, in a lot of early Western music, most of it's all in C4. It's all in groups of three. Um, like yeah. I, as far as I'm aware, like really, really early music, church music and things, but it was all based in three and triplets. Um, yeah. Uh, and it mm-hmm. wasn't until later that four four became more used, more widely used. I don't know why that would be. I think the mm-hmm. the sort of galloping, da 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 da, da or even slower. Um, yeah, which is why your five eights and your seven eights are quite common because you have that ba ba da ba da 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 you know, it's in- seven, interchanging eight, between the two clave you want to use. Yeah, uh, Hungarian music, uh, Eastern European music uses your your five yep. your five eights, five fours, and your seven eight seven fours quite a lot, and interchanges them quite a lot as well. Um, but yeah, no, but you're right. The, it, those rhythms are kind of seen everywhere. Your three fours and your four fours, especially, yeah, all over the place. Yeah, yeah, doesn't really matter where. Um, yeah, I've got harmony. Uh, yeah, I've yeah. Got two others there. Har- harmony and and sort of choral singing. You see, wherever you go, there's yeah, always vocal singing, vocal singing, you know, like singing even in... instruments. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Like instruments are every single culture has a flute, a bowed stringed instrument, a drum, and drums and vocals. Drum, you know, so uh, every single culture has some kind of wind instrument. So, you know, South America, you have pan pipes, you even have like uh, they have like recorder style mm-hmm. um, flutes and stuff like that. Uh, Japan has the shakuhachi, you know, although it's not really a folk instrument, it was more of like a, a, a it's like used by Buddhist priests mm. uh, and monks mostly, um, you know. Every single culture has some kind of harp. You know, the yeah, Greeks yeah. had their lyres. Uh, over here in Britain, you have clarsax and, and harps. And, uh, you know, at Japan, they have the koto. And actually, another point, all Japanese instruments are basically rip-offs of Chinese instruments. Basically, they're just later developments. Right, okay. You know, but they're all based on the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you know, even guitar, you know, uh, in the Middle East, you have the oud, which then became the Spanish guitar, which then got taken over to South America and then got developed into all sorts of instruments, uh, you know, and then the Baroque guitar got taken to Hawaii and became the ukulele. And uh, Japan has the shamisen, which is basically like a proto banjo. <laughs> uh, and the banjo is like an African instrument uh, <laughs> originally. It's uh, it's based on, uh, you know, uh, Af- African instruments are fascinating, really, really fascinating. Mm-hmm. But yeah, all these groups, they're they're everywhere. Oh, yeah. we we use all the same instruments, even That's bagpipes. Much, yeah. yeah, bagpipes are. I mean, there's so many different types of bagpipes. I had no idea. You, you could, yeah, from the Great Highland bagpipe to the Great um, Goat bagpipe. Literally, I've seen a bagpipe. It's Made got of the a most goat. incredible sound. It's literally just a goat uh, <laughs> uh, uh, with like with a reed uh, with a reed stuck in it. Uh, and uh, I saw that the guy was playing basically one of its legs. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> was you know that's where the notes were and he was like blowing into like another into a big pipe that was going f- from another leg um that's mad. and it was just the most surreal it was the funniest thing i've ever seen yeah but anyway so yeah so that like so much commonality if you have that's the point if you're if you're making music and you can all you can often get too close to your music and and be like, is this actually any good? Like, you put it out on Facebook and yeah. all your friends are like, oh, it's so good, well done, it's amazing, I love it. 
But mm. no one's going to tell you, like, oh, this is terrible. Uh, no one's going to do that. Um, or very rare to find someone like me yeah, who would do that. It's that, whole, <laughs> it's that classic, like, you know, it's the musical equivalent of, like, oh, you look great. You look fantastic. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're just a big ball of lard. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, um, you know. So. But I mean, you, you get the point. Yeah. It's. It's hard. It's hard to tell if your music is any good. It really is hard to tell because you're so close to it. It is. So there are the reason why we're talking about this is try to try and understand what what makes music good generally, and we've got we've got mm. to like understand that good is such a is such a broad term. Um, so <laughs> yeah, like there are, there are different things that. People would say, oh, this is good, this is good. But, like, we're just talking generally here. We'll go into the, the sort of more abstract uh, after this. But I've written, yes. I've written here, um, there, were all, there will always be some weirdo who finds rocks clanging together particularly emotive and musical. But, yeah, like I was saying like, before... like me and bitter drinks. You know? Yes, exactly, like I was saying before. But... Um, w- what I would argue is any meaning that is to be found in a musical moment such as rocks clanging together would have to be explained beforehand. It's not the message, the emotional message is not inherent in the sound. For example, um, I don't know, a bunch of rocks falling down a cliff and landing on the ground is a sound. Is it music? No, Mm. it's not music. Um, it's just sounds. Now, if you were to use that sample in a piece and say this represents the blah 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 and the blah blah blah, and and people can go, oh yes, I really felt the emotion in this. If you use it in that sort of sense, then it then it becomes music because you're like, I'm using sound effects to yeah, convey a, a musical yeah. thing. Yeah. But but we, everyone enters into that thinking this person is trying to convey something using these sounds, but a sound in and of itself is not musical. Whereas someone playing a guitar in and of itself is an expression of human emotion. Um, like you can... Well, e- de- de- define play. Well, the, that's the thing. Play, well, someone who actually like, knows how to I play. Could, yeah, just smack your guitar. Uh, yeah, yeah, because I could be sitting here just like... Music. Right, yeah, yeah, it's music. <laughs> there's a, there's a, there is a blurred line there. Um, yeah. Like, and, and you, you can't even say, like, oh, anything that is created by humans is music. Because birds sing. Is that considered music? I would say so. Bird song, yeah. I could, I could take that. Yeah. Um, it's, well, it's, it's musical. It's, it's musical it has for birds. Patterns. It has patterns, yep. And pitch and everything. Yeah. Uh, rhythm. Yeah. So, but what I'm trying to say is, is I'm I'm trying to attack postmodernists here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> genuinely. Oh uh, yes. No, feel free because 100. I'm I'm with you. I'm with you on this. Um, um, I, I just don't think that the the meaning that these people say is there is actually there. I think they're just reading into it. Um, uh, and at the point where mm. you start to read something into it. And you have to convince other people that they need to read into it too. Is it really? Is it really worth it in the first place? It's like you could mm. sit someone who's never heard music before and sit sit them in a room and play music to them, and they would get it immediately. It's it's chemical. It's in your brain. It's patterns developed over millions of years of evolution to recognize certain mm. patterns in music and pitch and rhythm, and it's a human thing. But I mean, when it gets so it, abstract, I was going to say like you know. Parrots have it as well. Yeah, you know this whole like. That's how deep it goes. Of, there's a couple of there's some animals that like can recognize musical rhythm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's I would most, love it's to most know. Advanced, I think in in humans. I would love Yeah, I would love to know how old the gene that allows uh, creatures to like comprehend music sound played in a certain order mm. to to convey something because it's definitely older than humans 100% um yeah if it goes back to like i mean common ancestors with birds is like millions of years ago yeah there's been like 
tests and studies done on the effect of music on animals. Certainly mammals are like very, that. like cows yeah. especially. Mammals especially. Yep. Yeah. You can play music M- to cows and, and they sleep. They just fall asleep. Yeah. I've seen it. Yeah, they did a... Like, and so there's a study, uh, there was a study done in like SSPCA shelters, I think it was by Glasgow Uni, mm. and they were determining to see what music helps <coughs> dogs calm down in the kennels right. a lot more. Okay. And they played them like a bunch of different things and they found the one that had the most effect on dogs was reggae. <laughs> I think you've so, mentioned this before. I don't know what that <laughs> tells you about dogs, but there you go. That's um, funny. It's funny. Yeah, my cats hate music. I mean, I think it's just me. Uh, I, th- I think they like the harp all right, but as soon as I get my bass out and I plug it in, yeah, uh, too rumbly. they just go away. Too rumbly, yeah. Yeah, it's too rumbly. Yeah, yeah I've got like a cat it, that anyway. whenever I turn on the surround sound DVD player, one of my cats goes running out of the room. She just doesn't like the, the sub. It's like... Um. And she's like, no! Whereas my other cat doesn't even look up. It doesn't even notice it. Um, <laughs> strange. Um, so yeah we're, yeah, we're getting a bit, a bit um deep here. So yeah, there there are certain things in music that constitutes mm-hmm. like there's there's like the best music in the world. And when I say the best music in the world, I mean the music that um the most amount of people get the most amount of meaning from tends to be mm-hmm. um stuff that is sort of generally uh, palatable to everyone on first listen. It's, that's why it's pop music. Pop music right. is like that. It's it's on first listen, you can go away and be like, oh, that's that's really quite palatable. But the, the first time you hear like really complicated, like atonal math rock, um, it takes a couple yeah. of listens for you but, to really get into it. Um, yeah. I mean, that's what I was going to say. Like really... All music has been pop music until a certain point in time, nineteen hundreds or so, you know, or like late the late nineteenth century. That's when things started getting a little crazy. But up until that point, even like all of Bach's music, all of Handel's music, Mozart, it was just pop music of that time. It was popular, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, it was certainly popular with a certain class and you know what, sure. whatever. Do you know what I mean? A certain, um, yeah, a certain class of people, and there was, you know, but pop music has always been a thing. Yeah, you know, um, it wasn't until pre First World War, I think, and then certainly post Second World War. Yeah, yeah, uh, just a lot of crazy, and in- I mean, interesting. It had to be done, I guess, but lots of crazy stuff started happening. Yeah, um, so wrapping that section up i would say my definition of good music would be music that evokes emotion and communicates meaning to the listener whether they want it to happen to them or not it's involuntary it's Mm. a a human being a general you know sort of standing upright normal human being would listen and and understand that this is a musical yeah do you would you include hate as one of those emotions yes um, Does it need to be pleasurable? All right. Okay, no, uh, cool. as long as it conveys something. Like, do you hate the sound of the wind blowing through the leaves and the trees? It just is. It is a sound. It doesn't really evoke any emotions. It's a sound. Unless you associate it. it with something from a past thing. But um, I would say some sounds I mean, are just they're just sounds. They're not. I hate. I hate the I hate the sound of cutlery on a on a plate. Yeah, it's just annoying. <laughs> but I think that's just harsh. It's just there's well, oh, it, it makes me grate my teeth and yeah, like cringe. But yeah, yeah, I, I wouldn't um, say that's another. That's another episode. It's not really an emotion. It, what what I mean is like we use speech, we use language to mm. communicate, and we use music to communicate. But different things we communicate emotion with music mm. with um with yes. speech and language we communicate ideas. We don't really communicate ideas mm. with music unless you put some lyrics on, but music doesn't, it doesn't deal mm. with ideas. It, it deals with emotion. Um, and I would say good music is something that does that really well. I'll say that. Um, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Because actually, 
No, you're okay. Yeah, no, you are right, because you can... I've definitely listened to pieces of music that have made me feel angry, uh-huh. and not necessarily at the music, but just at... Sometimes at the music, but sometimes at... Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, it kind of, it kind of reminds me of a... There's a John Cage uh, quote. He was, uh, basically said... Uh, I'm paraphrasing here, but it was something along the lines of like, if you're not irritating people <laughs> with your art, you're you're doing something wrong. Yeah. Um, which is a good point. Like, if you're not invoking any kind of emotion, emotion yeah. whether it's positive or negative, then yep. you're not really doing anything. Yeah. You know, That's, you're just you might as it's so well right. just be creating annoying noise yeah or just not even an, just noise just boring it doesn't mean like, anything you if know? it doesn't do anything for anyone if it's just like oh his, like his song is meh it's alright meh I'm not really you know thinking I, I, any any way about it it's just like oh yeah, it's alright that's what you don't want you want <laughs> you want someone to give you oh my god that song oh that was amazing that's the best song I've ever like or oh that was absolutely dreadful. I absolutely hate that. But if it's just like, meh. If everyone listens to your stuff, never mind. If, if it's just like, yeah, it's okay. And let me tell you, man. I've I've uh, I've listened to some tracks that are just like, eh. yeah. So it's sorry, right. it's a song. Yeah. Yeah. They've even performed music. But I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. Eh. yeah. 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 I'm not- Which is sad. I hate it. <laughs> That's a thing. It's just like there's nothing here. Yeah. To it's very rare that happens that there's a piece of music that does not. I can't find anything good about it. You know, there's always going to be something. Sure. You know, but nothing. It's happened. Mm. Very rare, but it has happened. Yeah. Um. It's funny. Yeah. It's funny. Like. I'd rather I'd rather create something. Doesn't matter what it is. I'd rather create something that people really loved or really hated, rather than everyone just be mm-hmm. like, "Meh, I'm sorry." Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I'm with you. Like, I'm the, I'm I'm I, I'm on the same boat. You know, um, my parents don't really understand it when they're like, um, "So if you don't know, my my sister has a YouTube channel." And she's been getting so much attention now that she occasion she occasionally it's very rare, but she occasionally gets like a uh, nasty comment. And my mom's like, How dare they blah 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 <laughs> and I'm like, No, let them, man. Like yeah. they, whatever. She got like, one this morning if actually. She, if she's doing something good. Do you know what I mean? If that's she's that's good, yeah, yeah. To react like that. There's some people going, Oh my god, this is the best thing. Well done, no, amazing. And then you get other people who are like, yeah. Oh, this is dreadful, nothing like the original, blah blah blah. That's great. Um, because I certainly I've put some Fantastic. some YouTube videos up where you get nothing at all from anybody. Uh, it's because it's just like eh, eh, yeah. it's all right. um so we've established what we mean by good and what we mean by music. <laughs> um Yes. So it took a while. Yeah, so Moving on to the second half. So I've talked about this second half. I've talked a little bit in passing about this before. And yep. uh, I I think this is one of the most overlooked aspects of modern music. Nobody, Nobody's really talking about this. It's very rare. There's a couple of YouTubers I've, I've watched who talk about this. And mm. um, one of them being Rick Beato. I'm uh, trying to think... Yeah, I was gonna. Admit, I was gonna say Rick Beato because he's. He doesn't. Uh, I he, love. I love. He doesn't use this stuff. language, he's, but he does. He is talking about this. Um, uh, so I'm. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to make it scientific because why not? So that's the. It's, it's so you. <laughs> it's so me. Um, if I if I was not, if I wasn't going to become a musician, I was going to be something to do with science. Possibly being a sound engineer, I think it's like it's the, the most, most scientific, scientific yeah, like yeah. career path in music, music that you can go down. It, you know? it certainly is. Apart from like acoustics, yeah, which I keep getting that. Pe- people are always like, "Hey, there's there's jobs in acoustics." I'm like, "Really? Cool. I don't care. That's <laughs> not my thing." <laughs> yeah, let someone else do it. But anyway, so another side to music, yeah. um. Other than the just the existence of it is the the expression of it. Once you establish what is music, 
um, is how how you express it or how you perform it or how you capture it mm. in a recording. So a trend yeah. in music nowadays, now we're talking about pop music made in the last 10 years, not, not just pop music, like most music made in, in the last 10 years, 15 years. The trend mm. seems to be, to me, uh, for recorded music is everything is quantized and tuned um, all the time, every single performance. So what I mean by that, quantize, yeah. quantizing for those who don't know, quantizing is making the rhythm of the track you're performing, so maybe it's drums or bass or guitar, so it's the rhythm that you're playing and lining that rhythm up to a grid. So it's basically correcting any errors in time and making it perfectly in time across a, a subdivision like a 16th note or, or a semiquaver if you're British. Um, so this is what uh, producers do now. Um, they What they call it is they snap to the grid or quantize to the grid. So in a DAW like Pro Tools or Cubase, there is a grid, you know, with your time and each beat is quantized to the grid, meaning that every hit, yeah. every note, every strike is moved to it, the grid. Um, so, yeah. so that it's played in time, inverted commas. Mm. Um, and the same goes for pitch, for singers, for anyone playing a single note. Um, you can also tune these notes to the exact uh, pitch of a note. So... We agreed about over a hundred years ago, whenever it was, that um, every, every single musical piece that was played in the West is tuned to A440, meaning that I think it's A2, is, is it A2 or A1, I can't remember, uh, is tuned to 440 uh, hertz. A2 is like really, really low. Okay, maybe not. Uh, I think it's like A... A4 maybe? I don't know actually because I'm trying to think what middle C is. C two, is it not? I don't know. I don't know anything. Uh oh, I know it's C four. C four is, is middle, middle C. C. All right, I don't know anything. Yeah, um, yeah. So C four. So I'm guessing that it would be A A four. A four four. Oh yeah, that makes A4, sense. Yeah. A four. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. When, right, we know that A440 is the standard A um, through the world. That's that's what it was agreed upon. So from that, we can derive the pitch for, of every note on the keyboard. So we quantize a rhythm and we tune yeah. our vocalists to you know what the relative key. Uh, just reading here, the C, the C, the numbers are different on MIDI versus real life. Oh, so, like, on MIDI, middle C is C3 for some bizarre reason. Oh, that's stupid. But, um... And that would be middle C. That one there is C4. Oh. Uh, uh, so. Okay, fair enough. There you go. It's bizarre. So, what... I would argue that this... The, the reason people do this is so they can get the music to be perfect, right? You want your drums... Your drummer to play exactly in time, you know, subdivisions are all so say they're playing like a you know dun dun dat dat dun dun dat dun dun dat. So that the subdivision there is sixteenth notes. So the, the the subdivision is like one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a da 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 da. So if you quantize that drummer's performance, every single note, every single note will fall exactly on the grid, exactly on those subdivisions. Now, if you don't quantize it, mm. it'll be human and it'll be slightly late, slightly early, slightly late, slightly early, and different emphasis is on different yeah. beats and blah, blah, blah. Uh, and the same with pitch, you know, like if everything is exactly tuned to a perfect note every single time, it sounds more perfect. Um, yeah. And I think that the reason why they do like, that is to get that perfect sound and also it's easier yeah. to drop in parts from other people. So if you record drums in this house and someone records bass in this house, if they all play to a grid, you can mash them all together and they all work because they're all uh, assigned mm. to a grid. Um, I think yeah. that's why we do it. Um, but I would argue that this process has sucked 
any musicality or humanness from the music, making it boring and sterile. What would you think? Yeah, man. No, I'm I'm with you. Like uh, when you compare it, um, I mean, it, it's more prevalent in certain styles of music. The whole quantizing thing, that's for sure. Like uh, uh, they use it a lot in, like like a lot of modern metal. Oh yeah. Now it's all quantized to heck. <laughs> yep. It's ridiculous. <laughs> you know? yeah. And it's the same with. Um, yeah, uh, hip hop is the same, and actually, a lot of old school hip hop tracks, mm -hmm. because they weren't, you know, they were like looping stuff, but the loops weren't like metronomically perfect. There would sometimes be like a little swing, or uh, like a little weird, you know, like you know, it might be like a slight second over. Mm -hmm. But it adds to like a certain, you know, it does. It adds to the sound. It adds to the feel. You know. Yeah. Now that's not really a thing anymore. Um. Every everything's quantized. Yeah. And yeah, it just kind of sucks. I mean, like quantizing is a bit of a weird one because <laughs> it can be. It's like auto tune, right? And pitch correction, mm -hmm. when used appropriately, it can be really handy mm -hmm. and a, it can be really useful right uh to just to fix like little silly mistakes somebody coming in a little late for example yep somebody coming in early you know on bass or whatever mm -hmm. you can just move it across yeah you know that, or move it back whatever you need to do that's fine yeah um you know maybe somebody's playing uh you got a fiddle player and they play uh, they're playing a note with uh, another instrument, and they're not. They, not that the you know, it sounds something that doesn't need to be perfectly in tune, but maybe it's just a little too out of tune. Jarring. You can bring it back yeah. down. It's great for for doing that kind of stuff, but I feel like there's this sort of um, what's the word? Um, it's just people are taking it too far the other way. Yes. You know, I've been in studios. <laughs> just... I don't know if you have, but I've been in studios and sat behind engineers and watched them quantize an entire an entire performance note by note. So they'll go in and they'll threshold every single note that a player has played, and they will they will stretch time stretch to the grid every single note. And I'm sitting there going, "You have just taken." the human performance of that person and deleted it and replaced it with a machine. You might as well just use samples at this point. Like, why are you bothering bringing in a real-life um, human? Yeah. it's when, when people do that, it's ridiculous. I've, I have a funny story to tell, actually. I'm going to not mention any names, and if I do by accident, please... If you, if uh, future Gavin wouldn't mind editing them out, <coughs> but I've, I have, I'm pretty confident because I, I do this all the time. But uh, this is, I was in a recording session one time, and there was, uh, I, I, I had come in to record some bass parts, um, because that's that's my job, because <laughs> <laughs> that's what I do, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's what I do, and I was just going over chords you know double checking some stuff you know just do, doing the usual and i was sitting in the control room oh. uh and the uh there was a drummer the drummer was uh recording their part mm -hmm. and um they kept doing take after take after take and it was dreadful okay it was really bad. The takes were just bad. I don't know what was happening. And uh, the engineer was looking at it and was going, right, okay. Okay. Am I going to have to... Yeah. I'm going to have to quantize yep. all of this. Or get a drummer in, mm. another drummer in, uh, in secretly... <laughs> And re-record it. Right. Okay. And I saw I saw them trying to quantize the drums. Mm. I'm not even kidding, man. It was 
it was ridiculous. It was just like every single snare hit every single like everything. everything yeah. It was I don't remember how we ended up how they ended up fixing it. I think what ended up happening was that I recorded at the same time as the drummer. Right. And then they just went, right, we're just going to use that and we're going to have to play to that. Because the problem was is that I was, I had played the bass lines to a click mm. and it was, it was fine and the drums just weren't happening. Right. Um, but yeah. Oh boy. That was, that wasn't like, uh, you, you know, uh, I think it's questionable when en- engineers like have somebody who's recorded a drum line and then they just like quantize it all of it like right there and then i just think that's ridiculous but uh, in that case it was just kind of like a am i gonna have to actually do this <laughs> oh no it was yeah it's a lot nuts. of work it's a lot of work yeah um that, i'll say this now like most most engineers quantize everything um it's it's actually quite it's quite bad um i didn't realize how how mm. um how prevalent it was like everybody does it yeah it... um i never quantize ever 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 the only time i'll mm. quantize you know uh is if someone's pl- if someone's playing late so say say there's a big uh hit which is uh quite common where you'll be like maybe the last chorus will be like da 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 and then everyone comes in right so a wee gap, and then everyone comes in. Now, nobody ever gets that perfect. There's always somebody who's a wee bit early, somebody's a wee bit late, and maybe the impact isn't quite as good. So I'll maybe just tweak them so that they all come in together. One note. Yes. You know? Or they all come off together. Um, and I adjust the fades and things like that. But every yeah. single note, no way. No way would I mess with that. Um, like, there, there's a good video. I was talking about Rick Beato. Um, there's a video mm. he he does of... He takes a John Bonham drum line, uh, Led, yeah. Led Zeppelin, and he quantizes it. And you want to hear this. It's absolutely garbage. It just sounds <laughs> terrible. Like, who yeah, who I knew? Exactly. Like, the, I know the video. The yeah. actual sound of John Bonham's drums. Guess what, guys? It ain't the sound of the drums. It's the style that he plays. It's the, it's the out-of-timeness that he played. It was his character, his feel. That's what we call feel. Yeah. Like It's the human feel. It's not in time. Mm-hmm. Right, so we'll get onto this next part. This is the, where the science comes in, the mathematics. So I've observed this over the last couple of years and thought about it quite quite a lot. Mm-hmm. I think the reason why this the human personality, the, the musicality of modern pop music or modern music in general, because it is country music, metal music, pop music, rock music, everything, it's all sterile garbage nowadays, right? It's all quantized and auto-tuned, everything is so fake. If you listen to the top 10 right now, it's all in-your-face, over-compressed vocals, cicadas, um, over, over-quantized over drums, perfectly in-tuned backing vocals. Everything's too pristine and too perfect. And it's just it just doesn't evoke the same emotions as an old Motown record, right? Yeah. And technically, the Motown record is all out of time and out of tune and everything, but it's it's just the emotion, the human emotions there. So this this mm. I've this in mathematics, this is linear and non-linear. So linear means mm. in a mathematical sense, arranged in or extending along a straight line or nearly straight line. That's what linear means. I'll give you an example of something that is linear. A click track is linear because it's the same, it's repeating, it's in a straight line, it's always the same. Mm. It's exact. And then you've got non-linear. A non-linear equivalent to a click track would be a conductor in an orchestra conducting one, two, three, four. It's not exact. Every bar that man or woman conducts is different. Like, it's generally the same, but it has some degree of flexibility. It's slightly more um, natural and human. So linear is straight, clean, perfect, the same, repeating, exact. Non-linear is wavy, yeah. imperfect, dirty, rough, jaggy, unique. Um, linear yeah. is digital, zero or one. Non-linear is analog, zero to one, with all the infinite space in between. It's variable. 
um, I would argue that the, the one that describes human humans the best is nonlinear. Um, yeah. Because humans aren't perfect. Making music no. to describe human emotion using a linear format is just wrong. Mm -hmm. Using a nonlinear format where ex expression in all directions is allowed is much nicer to the human ear. That's why people prefer vinyl because vinyl sounds technically worse, but it adds a character, a quality, a sort of random sort of noise and warmth and it, it just sounds nicer to listen to than a CD. Um, also, there is a, a, a sort of ritualistic, you know, sure, there's that sort as well. of feel to having to open it up and then put the thing in and then whereas now like that's totally lost it's like oh yes the ritual of opening up my spotify, spotify app, app <laughs> and then pre pressing my big clammy thumb yeah on the screen yeah that's <laughs> that's one layer go. deeper um like the actual act of doing it but it's the same the same yeah. goes for recording like um linear and digital it's it's the same for uh audio plugins and and things like that uh we like distortion we like we like non-linear things mm. we like things that are not um exact and repeating and 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 stale and perfect um people like to strive yeah. for that but it's not it's not what we want really it's humans yeah. aren't like that um yeah like it, i've got there's a difference here like what's the difference between just justin bieber and john bonham Right, okay, obviously one's a drummer, one's a singer. But if you listen to likes of Justin Bieber music, I heard there was a song on the on the radio the other day I heard. Um, and the song's fine. I'm like, yeah, it's fine. Good pop song. But the way it was recorded, it's like everything is so blooming pristine and the vocals are super compressed and everything's auto-tuned and perfectly in time. And you listen to like an old John Bonham, you know, Led Zeppelin record and it's all... You listen to the, the starting tempo and the end tempo and it's totally different and the, there's sort of weird tuning problems and noise mm. and it's it's jaggy and uh, it's just it's got so and much even more if feeling. Like, if you're wanting to compare like Justin Bieber to like another pop singer yeah 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 you know um, even like like vocally you know some like somebody like Freddie Freddie Mercury is a really good example oh yeah um, there is so much N nonsense <laughs> happening in his singing yeah. you know it's not perfect it's good it's a great vocal delivery but it is there's a lot of weirdness going on same with like david bowie actually mm. you know like um even uh or somebody else i don't know bob bob dylan actually oh yeah uh i was listening to some bob dylan <laughs> try auto-tuning to... him oh my god <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> like the, the auto tuner will yeah. be like what is this what is that actually i wonder if somebody must have done <laughs> that would be so funny somebody <laughs> must have hard tuned uh <laughs> bob dylan but um i mean like he he does he you know people he does sing in tune like the both singers are singing in tune yes is that one of them has the ability to um you know, because say what you want about Justin Bieber, like he's he, he is a, he is a musician. It's just yeah, that yeah. you know he can play he can he can play the in, uh, you know drums, piano, guitar. He yeah. can sing, yeah. right? He can do all those things. Um, but one of them is singing in tune, uh, but is working. Yeah, you're right. It's that sort of like zero to one kind of idea. It's like um, rather than on or off. You know, there's yeah, yeah. increments. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That they can they can go between. Yep. Um, it's it's not it's not um, because because we've been listening to this for the last ten years. It's not um, allowing people to. We're getting used to it. We're getting used to this perfection. It's always in tune. So the point now, when we yeah. when we hear it's stuff that's not auto tuned, it's like oh, it's out of tune. Yeah. It's like uh, we're uh, the same things kind of happening with guitars now, with like fanned frets and uh, and things like that. Yeah, people are trying to quantize the guitar, but but the thing is, is that we've already gotten used to the guitar being imp imperfectly yeah, yeah. tuned. Yeah, 
right? Uh -huh. Like the higher up you go up the fretboard, the worse it gets, especially when you're playing chords. Mm -hmm. Single notes, you don't notice it. But like if you start playing bar chords up like on the ninth, yeah, yeah. tenth fret, it sounds bad. Man. Yeah, but it sounds good. It sounds really it sounds it's well well, I mean like but in a band setting you don't notice it. No. Right? In a but if I was just to like Yeah, that, that guitar's in tune, and it's set up, but I don't know if you'll be able to hear that. It's worse on, on electric guitars, I think, but if I was to play like a... Oh. It's a little funky. Yeah, it's a, but, it's a tune. Yeah, you can really hear it there. <laughs> yeah. You can really hear... I mean, it gets, it gets bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that E string was a little funky, which probably... I don't know. Since Im impeded the experiment, but you get the idea. Since digital has become the main means of recording, we are basing <laughs> our recordings now on the linear system. The linear system being, mm. you know, straight, clean, perfect, the same, repeating, exact, um, e exactly on on the beat, exactly on the tune, exactly on, on because these tools are now at people's disposal. So of course they're going to use it to mm. the the absolute nth degree. So I would say that the linear system that we are using now is not sophisticated enough to capture the complexity of human emotion and human psychology, because human beings are not perfect. Human emotions are they're fluctuating. They're not one or zero. They're not binary. They're not digital. Um, so why why would we record music, which is a which is an expression of human emotion? Why would we record that using a linear system? It makes no sense to me at all. Why would you do that? There's so mm -hmm. much emotion in a vocal that is outside of the exact tuning of a perfect D, a perfect C, a perfect A. There's so much in between there that people are m m missing out on. Like Bob Dylan, he didn't sing exactly on the note all the time. His his style of uh, of singing was very floaty and you know moving up and down. Oh yeah, like his, his that's how he sung. So it's, it's quite talkative. Yeah, he's very talkative, right? Because he's a lyricist, he's a poet, really. That's I mean, that, yeah. But there's we're missing out on that stuff now because it's all got to sound perfect. It's always got to be in time. Um, as far as I can tell, the non-linear system does a better job of conveying human emotion because humans are non-linear. You know, we are analog beings. Mm. We have analog brains. We don't have digital brains. Uh, we have a yeah. you know a meat computer in our head, which is it runs on an analog-based system. It's not zero or one. Mm. It's, it's it's infinite. Yeah. Um, Here's a question though. Yeah. Um, so should we just totally trash? Uh, we should totally just trash tuning our instruments with tuners and using okay. click tracks and right. stuff. Right, so here we go, right? Right. <laughs> so so click tracks are linear, right? So that's fine. You should play to a click track, obviously. You should play to a click track, mm. right? Because you need a, a reference. But the recording you make to that click track should remain unquantized. As long as your, your upbeats and your downbeats are all mm. roughly rough, close to, yeah. the, to the objective time that you've set by a metronome um, as long as it's matching on that anything that happens in between there should be left to the musician um, and now if it's so bad a performance like that drummer friend of yours if it's so bad then I wouldn't quantize it I would just get another drummer <laughs> because you're never going to make you're never going to make a cake out of a pile of crap um, that's mm -hmm. just how, how I see that like just get just get a drummer or just use samples Use a if you want to if you want to quantize you may as well just use a a canned you know drum beat you know from a from a program tuners tuners are linear as well right you buy a tuner mm -hmm. for your guitar that's linear um, because each note in the tuner is like exactly to the frequency and you tune your guitar to those frequencies as best you can but when you're playing your guitar like you're playing bar chords up in the sixth fret or whatever. It's going to be slightly sharp and slightly flat and slightly weird and, and bendy. And, and when you play the, the guitar yeah. too loud, too heavy, it goes sharp yeah, and things you, like that. You, you, you're going to hit the string, yeah, exactly. When you hit the strings a little harder, it's going to change the pitch. Yeah, you know? and that's okay. Um, that adds tension. That's It's music. Um, yeah. It's, it's no wonder that uh, 
people often say that modern modern music is is lacking soul. Um, it's because we're using a, we're we're using a system that I think is incompatible with um, how humans work. Um, as, as, as I've been thinking about this for a long time, um, mm. and I don't know, I could be wrong. I'd like to hear what people think of this, actually. Um, so yeah, like I use these digital tools like anyone else, but I don't go crazy on them. I still allow the performance of the band to come through. I'll give an example. I um, an example of a, a of a non-linear recording system would be recording to tape. Um, that's non-linear, mm. um, but obviously we I can't do that because it's so damn expensive and I don't have enough room, so I use digital. But I can still use a sort of non-linear philosophy when recording. I'll give you an example. I was recording a band uh, last, not last year, <laughs> two years ago, um, and the band, I've seen the band play loads of times and they told me the song they were going to do, so I was listening to this song and I noticed when they were playing it live, they were playing in King Tut's, this was a band called the Muldoons, they were playing King Tut's and there was this song that they've got, it's on their album, called No Pressure and I noticed that Every time they played it live, they started off at one tempo and ended up in a faster tempo. And I was like, hmm, because I like to record to click tracks, right? So I, I was listening to this. Now, sometimes bands do this, but they don't mean to do it. They, mm. they add in these weird tempo changes and it's because they've not played together tight enough. But this, in this case, they were using this accelerando or getting faster as a musical mm -hmm. expression. It was it kind of fluctuated in tempo. So I made a decision then and there that I was going to turn off the click track for the song when they recorded it. And I was going to get the whole band in the room recording all together as one. And they they were very sceptical about this. Um, they they said, are, are you sure? Like, oh, I don't know. I don't know about this. I don't know how, how this is going to go down. Um, we did that and... They were like, oh, okay, right, fine. So I mixed it, sent it back to them, and they were like, oh, my God, this is so good. This is exactly what we wanted because it's a like the most perfect representation of the music I could get. It was non-linear. I let them just express I, themselves. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they did they recorded a lot. Of after that, I did like three, four other songs for them, and I did it in the same way played it live, mm. they just, oh, so much yeah. I was missing so much of their sound, of their character by letting, by not letting them uh, express themselves non-linearly if you want to put it that way um, it was great, I loved it, I do this with so many bands mm. now, I just, if, if there yeah, are things we, like we, that, I'll just let them go and do it yeah. live. We, we did that sort of uh, we did like a hybrid version with, with our own band, where we had mm. like half of the band, because the band's too big for the studio really um, yes, unfortunately, <laughs> and too many. There's a lot of instruments with lots of problems that are just difficult to record. Very but, difficult. But um, yeah. yeah, we 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 did that. So we had like rhythm section in one one week playing, and all together. then yeah. every and then like everybody else the other week, and it added so much. Like for example, like bass and drums. Uh, and is is such a good thing to you should I th I think you should always try to track them together, yeah, yeah if yeah. possible course, at the same yeah. time because it's doable. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like bass guitar is super quiet. You know, like my me playing my bass, you know, is not going to especially if it's just going di and you're going to reamp it later. Like it is not going to impact. It's not going to bleed into like the overhead. No, no, you know, <laughs> mics. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, yeah. So, but as an example, you know, like that really, really worked. I believe that. Uh, like, if you're in a rock band, just record all your stuff at the Live. same time. Yeah, live percent. Even the vocals. What I, what I do now, and have been doing this for a couple of years now is I'll set the entire band up. Like, drums, two guitars, bass, and vocals, all in the one room, all playing at the same time. And then what I'll do is I will take from that performance what I think uh, deserves to be...
taken on. So if there's guitar parts that are kind of rusty, I will redo those bits. And the vocals, I'll delete and then do the vocals as an overdub um, because mm. they're often in the same room. And I don't have the room to have like a vocal booth and having them yeah. track it live. And I don't have the room for that. And vocalists sometimes don't like doing that because it's like, oh, take 26 and my voice is getting hoarse and I can't, I can't sing this anymore. So I don't want to do that. But the drums, the rhythm guitar, the bass, nine times out of ten, I'll keep that and maybe redo some lead, do a, maybe redo a solo and then redo the vocals and then some backing, backing vocals. But the meat and potatoes mm. of your mix should be done all in one pass all at the same time. And that's, 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 that's non-linear. It's allowing people to express themselves to how, how, how they should rather than be confined to a, to a click confined to a grid yep. it's so much more human um yeah this is just kind more of exciting as well to much more exciting to. Yeah. it comes across yeah much more you know um it's it's kind of more of a philosophy this this whole linear non-linear thing um that i mm. kind of discovered by accident um over a, a year or two um there was there were some plugins I was buying that they were described as non-linear. There's a thing called um, NLS, non-linear summing. What it is is um, what mixing engineers do. They they can buy a, a summing mixer. What it does is they they take each individual track in a mix, like kick drum, snare drum, hi-hats, overheads, and then send it to this mixer. And what the mixer does is it adds color, distortion, and each track is different. Because it's analog, so it's every time you pass it through and record it, it kind of captures it a little bit different, adds a little bit of color and distortion and individuality, and um, and it makes everything sound much more um, real rather than clean and pristine and digital. Um, so I thought, well, if that applies to equipment, it also applies to just real life, um, like this whole non-linear um, philosophy. It's just. I just think it's more human. Anyway, bit of bit of a deep one that a deep episode. <laughs> um, I've been thinking about this for a while. Um, uh, I don't know how this helps you level up your band, but it's like I suppose it does. <laughs> uh, it's just something to think about. Um, yeah, no, I agree. Um, yeah, one hundred percent. Well, it does help to level up your band because you're going to think about how you're going to record things in the future and you know yeah how you, how you sound recorded and live it's it's really important very i do definitely think like at least get the stuff that can all be like oh most guitars now get recorded di i would have thought and then reamped a lot later mm -hmm. uh i could be wrong I, sometimes they do just like straight into the amp you know microphone mm. record that yeah done. yeah when, whenever i'm tracking um, like i'll take a bass di rhythm di mm -hmm. and i'll maybe give them an, an amp sim in their head in their headphones in the case of the muldoons yeah. the the lead guitarist in that band loves to use his own amp so i, I just gave him an amp sim that sounded kind of like his amp and his headphones mm -hmm. while he was tracking and then when he was gone i just took his di ran it through his amp you know, he brought his amp in, mm -hmm. I mic'd it up, and then we ran the performance that he did that day back through the amp, and then any overdubs we could just do in the control room through the amp. Yeah. Uh, and Jeez. honestly, the the time it took just halved, and the sound quality yeah. and the performance and the, the musicality, everything just went straight up, like so much better. It just comes through so much more, yep. you know. So I'm, yeah. Again, I'd like digital is just, the sort of digital, like, either on or off, either in tune or out of tune, either on time or not in time. It's it's a terrible way to look at things. There's so much uh, leeway in between. Um, mm -hmm. Just go listen to Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd and, and try and, try, you try me, find me two bars in any of that entire album that's in time that, that's so like varied. Um, listen to like uh, the vocal Even, performance in like, Great Gig in the Sky. It's just like like, yeah, sure, there's some bits out of tune, but it's great. <laughs> it's yeah. amazing. Or, like, something like, you know, like the Ramones, for example. Yeah, try, yeah, quantize that and see if, if that sounds any good. No, of course not. It's going to sound awful. <laughs> yeah. I mean, now, whether, I mean, your opinion might be, yeah, but it sounded awful anyway. Sure, fine, whatever. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. 
it's still you still. know what i mean yeah. the excitement is gone when you the the humanness it's just totally gone when mm. you when you when you uh when you just sterilize it like that so yeah anyway um we'll definitely leave it there because that's that's uh an hour and ten minutes <laughs> Woo. It's been a beefy boy. Beefy boy. Is this gonna just turn into like the 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 Joe Rogan experience <sighs> soon enough? Oh, no. It's just gonna be like I don't know how many hours. I, I'll, I'll be I'd be fine with over a million pounds from Spotify. That'd be alright. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah. If it had that, if it had the same, uh, if it had the same, what you call it, following. Um, following yeah why not yeah let's let's do that let's overtake the fucking experience <laughs> sure. uh, we need do you know what we need to do we need to start talking about dmt and music that's, <laughs> how, that's how that's how we'll uh oh, okay that's how that's how we'll get all the and on that note follows. let's uh yeah so if you're enjoying the podcast <laughs> please leave us a review uh wherever you listen to it so that other people can see it too um Mm. Check out the website, the social medias, we're level up your bands mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's all good. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to comment on this um, episode, if there's any, yeah, just what, what's your, what's everyone's thoughts on the linear, non-linear thing that I uh, was laying out there? Um, what's, what's everyone's opinions on that? Because it's, it's quite an interesting one. I've not really heard a lot of people talking about it. So yeah, fire, fire a comment on YouTube or even just Instagram on the thumbnail, it's fine. Uh, yeah, it'd be cool to get some feedback. Anyway, right. I don't know. I don't know what's happening for next week, but uh, Julian must. He, he he will come up with something. I, I just know he will. Because um, uh, right, that's that that's uh, that's code for right. I'd, it's your turn I'd, to come up with something. No, it's code for <laughs> it, it's code for. I don't have anything. I, I don't know what to talk about. <laughs> so Julian will have something. Yeah, I've I've had a couple. Of, I have a couple of ideas. Yeah. Cool. We'll see. Better than me. Anyway, um, yeah, that was a beefy one. Um, mm. Hope you enjoyed it and hope you got something from mm -hmm. it. And I hope you have a good week and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>